Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inzor Education. Um, today's lecture will be about logic, more precisely about formal logic. That's when we are using certain symbols to represent logical relationship between certain statements. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Math Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com, and that's where I suggest you actually to look uh, to watch this lecture from, because every lecture has on the website parallel textual part, which is yes, basically exactly the same material, like a textbook. So you have the benefit of having, like, watching the lecture and reading the material, which is basically the same, um, just to you know to better consume and. Um, and, and, and study this information. So, um, to get to this lecture from Unizor.com, you have to just choose the course, which is Mass Plus and Problems, then the category, which is Logic, and within this category you will see Logic number 09, which is uh, Formal Logic um, Problems, which I will present right now. Well, before presenting the problems, I will just talk about logic a little bit. So, first of all, symbolics. Now, we are using uh, certain symbols to represent logical operations. Now, logical operations are basically operations with statements, uh, which can be either true or false, and then the combination of these statements can be either true or false. So, we are using this symbol, which is called disjunction, which is equivalent to logical OR. We will use this symbol for logical AND. When you are saying, like, this ball is red and made of plastic, or something like this. And for OR, for or uh, we can say that, well, the people in this room speak either English or French. Something like this. Now there is an operation of negation. I will use the tilde sign in immediately before the statement. That means that means not. And also there is an implication. I will use this one. Sometimes it's single arrow, sometimes it's double arrow. Doesn't really matter. I'll use single in this case. Implication means basically uh, if then. So again, so this is or, this is and, this is not, and this is if then. It's like a theorem. Okay, so these are symbols which I will use. Now, before explaining basically how operations are actually working um, I from the purely logical standpoint. Like, for instance, what happens if you will combine a true statement or another true statement? Will the combined statement will be true or false? Now, before doing that, I will introduce two models which seem to be quite simple, and you don't really have to um, like, remember this operation results between the logical um, statements, because you can always apply their uh, uh, equivalent model, which I will explain right now, um, which gives you exactly the same results, but you don't really have to re remember everything, to memorize anything. Okay, so what's the model of operations and logical statements. The model, well, I'll present two different models. One model is operations with integer numbers. So I assume that number zero represent a false statement. And any positive number, any positive number, but usually it's number one, except a couple of cases, it's a true statement. Now, operations between statements can therefore be modeled as operations between the numbers. Now, let me just give you an example. Let's talk about logical OR. Now, the operation of logical OR, if you have true and true two statements, 
combined with logical or, the result will be also true statement. Now, if you will operate between two positive numbers, let's say one and one, you will have a positive number, right? So in this case, it's exactly the same. Now, if you have false or false statements, like for instance, well, right now I see today is a sunny day, so the false statement would be, it's a rainy day, and another false statement would be, um, well, I'm in a good mood basically, but uh, I can say that the false statement would be, I, I'm in a bad mood. So either today is a rainy day, or I'm in a bad mood, that basically completely contradicts everything. So it's also a wrong statement. So false and uh, or false would give you a false statement. Now, from number model, zero um, and and zero, well plus sorry plus zero would give you also zero. So this is equivalent of plus operation plus. One and one gives you one, so positive and positive gives you positive. When I say one uh, and in this case, I mean the uh, arithmetic plus. When I have the zero and zero plus, will give you zero. So that corresponds. Finally, if I have one false statement and another true statement, for example, um, uh, today is uh, the rainy weather or um, a true statement, I'm in a good mood. Well, I am in a good mood, so basically, since it's a or, then the result will be, uh, will be still true. Now, in this case, zero and positive number, if you will add them together, would be positive number. So, the numbers and operations, uh, uh, operations plus on these completely correspond to logical or. Now, if you will have and, logical and. Now, true and true obviously will give you a true statement. Now, what's the equivalent in uh, the uh, set of numbers in the model? Multiplication. One times one would be one. Positive times positive would be positive. Now, if you will have all others, so true and false, for example, um, today is a sunny day and logical and I'm in a bad mood that that's definitely a wrong statement because we are basically state, stating that both of them take place but I'm not in a bad mood I'm in a good mood so everything is fine so that's a false statement and indeed if you will multiply positive by zero you will have zero right so that corresponds. And finally, false and false. Multiply zero by zero would be zero. So again, false. So as you see, these operations are really kind of resemb uh, logical operations, resemble operations on positive numbers. Um, if you basically equivalent zero to uh, a, a false and positive to uh, a, a true. Value. Now, negative, uh, sorry, uh, negation operation, operation is negation, is basically um, opposite. So, negation of zero would be one, and negation of one would be zero. If you will just add this, which kind of seems to be very kind of natural, that completes this model. So, instead of remembering this logical operations, you just remember that the true uh, statement can be modeled as a positive number, false statement as a zero, and operations plus and multiplication, uh, addition and multiplication corresponds to or uh, and, and, and logical or and logical and. And this thing, which is again natural, corresponds to, to not. So I, I'm, I'm just presenting this model as an easier way to remember all these logical manipulation, so you don't really have to think a lot. Just remember this particular model, and if you know that the positive uh, 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 added to positive will give you a positive number, that would be sufficient to basically say that uh, 
that true uh, logical or and uh, another true would give you a true or any other operations so that's one model now another model is related to set theory now the set theory is um, basically uh, um, operates with very similar kind of uh, entities and they even look like these there is a um, uh, the operation of um, uh, in, the, in, in the set theory uh, there is a di di disjunction and there is a conjunction so what does it mean um, now if you have two uh, sets the union of these is basically all uh, elements which belong to any uh, of these two the intersection of this which corresponds to logical um, conjunction that's an intersection which means this the commonplace and negation corresponds to uh, if you have a big uh, set and something in between then negation corresponds to everything it's a complement basically so everything which is outside of this I mean maybe this big one is the whole world I don't know it doesn't really matter but in, in this case it means the complements so everything which is not inside of this uh, particular um, uh, set and the rules are exactly the same um, so if you take for instance um, uh, two logical statements and if you will just modify them it, if you model them as, as sets um, it, it will be the correspondence between logical or and union of these two sets because um, basically being a true statement corresponds to an element being inside the set so if you are either this or that it means that the element uh, would belong to either this or that so everything all these areas which are shaded are, are, are these elements which belong basically to either or uh, uh, these two sets if you are specifying and again element belongs to a set that's one statement and another elements be belong to another set and if you combine these with end statement it be means that element belongs to this and that statement which is the intersection between them and obviously not means outside more than that in the set theory uh, modeling you even model the implication implication this if then statement this uh, actually again on the language of belonging very simple if this is um, one set inside of another subset A B so A B so if element belongs to A it belongs to then it belongs to B as well right since it's inside so this type of um, arrangement between two different sets corresponds to this logical statement if A is true which means if element belongs to set A then it also belongs to, the, to B then the B statement is also true so this is again modeling kind of things and using these models I will just present a few problems very simple problems now in in the textual part of this lecture the number of problems is greater than I'm presenting right now that's why I basically encourage you after you watch this lecture go to the website to unisor.com um, go to uh, Mass Plus and Problems course choose Logic and Logic 09 and you will just be uh, and, you, and you can basically uh, look at all the problems presented there try to solve them all in addition to whatever I'm just doing here okay so here is the problem statement S1 it's raining statement number two 
Uh, I like to walk in the park. State number three, I sing. Statement number four, I forgot my umbrella. I forgot my umbrella. So, what's required? Question. Uh, if it's raining, if it's raining, I don't like to walk in a park. So, the, the, the problem is express this symbolically using all these kind of um, terminology which I have introduced. So, first of all, this is an implication. It's if then, right? If it's raining, now it's raining is S1, then I'm stating that I don't like to walk in the park. But my statement I like to walk in the park S2. So I don't like to work in the park. It's negation of S2. And as if then statement, I'm using the uh, implication uh, symbol. So this is formal logic expression of this. Now, similarly, I'll just do it much quicker. If it's not raining, uh, I don't, I, I like to walk in a park. If it's not raining, I like to walk in a park. So if it's not raining, it means not S1. I like to work in a park, so that would be S2. By the way, from the uh, true and false uh, standpoint, now the first statement is true, because if it's raining, I don't like to work in a park. I mean, just a true statement. Now, if it's uh, uh, not raining, uh, I do like to go uh, to go to walk to a park. It's also a true statement. Then another. If it's not raining, I like to walk in a park and sing. Walk in a park is S2 and sing is S3. Now, what kind of a sign between them? I said like to walk in a park and sing. So this is conjunction, right? And the final one, uh, how to express it's raining and I forgot uh, to take my umbrella. Well, it's not an implication, it's just a statement. If it's raining, it's, it's raining, which is uh, S1. And I forgot to take my umbrella. That's and S4. S4 forgot my umbrella. So this represents this statement. It's raining and I forgot my umbrella. So these are basically exercising in formal, in the presentation of um, uh, regular statements with logical symbols, implication, negation, uh, conjunction, etc. Okay, that basically it. So again, what I suggest you to do is, when you be finish with lecture, go to the website and solve all these problems yourself. Just present it, and there are answers, so you can basically check yourself. Now the next set of problems is So here we just expressed certain logical statements symbolically. Now, um, the second statement uh, is the following. You have to evaluate the truth or false 
the, the, the true or false value of certain statements. So statements are um, S1 Prague is a capital of Czech Republic, which is a true statement. Now S2 uh, one dollar is equal to 100 cents, which is also a true statement. So this is true, this is true. Now, S3, China is in Europe, which is a false statement. It's in Asia. And S4, all uh, people are literate. Unfortunately, it's not true. Literate. So it's also a false statement. Now I am I'm asking to evaluate the true or false value of the following. S1 conjunction S2. So which is true and true. Well, first of all, using the numerical modeling, true is a positive, uh, another true is another positive, and is a multiplication. So basically, it's supposed to be true. Now, let's just think logically. I'm saying that Prague is the capital of the uh, Czech Republic, and uh, in each dollar, there are 100 cents. Well, it's definitely a true statement. So the value of this is true. Next, S1 conjunction, not S2. So, again, using numerical um, modeling, this is positive multiplied by not positive, which means zero, and uh, that should be zero, right? Should be false. But let's just think logically. We are saying that Prague is the capital of uh, Czech Republic, and uh, it's not 100 cents in a dollar. Well, this is definitely a false statement. Negation of true is false. And again, it corresponds to a numerical model. Negation of positive is zero. <coughs> so this is false. Now, and there are others which I don't really want to go through. Uh, I'll, I'll just maybe check one or two more with a false statement, something like um, I have S4 uh, logical end conjunction with not S3. So S4 means all people are literate, logical end. China is not a European country. Well, this is a true statement. China is not a European statement. But the first statement, all people are literate, is definitely false. And that's why if I combine them with logical end, the whole thing becomes false. From the numerical standpoint, the false is zero, not um, false is positive, but if you multiply them, that would be zero. So that's definitely a false statement. Something with uh, disjunction, uh, S3 or not S3. That's interesting. Okay, so what is this? China is in Europe or China is not in Europe? Well, if you are combining a statement and its own negation, you obviously have a true statement. So either it's in, China, uh, in, in Europe or it's not in Europe. That's true because it's really it's, it's either in or, 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 or outside of Europe. So this is a true statement. Now, from the numerical equivalent, um, uh, logical or is uh, addition, uh, S3 is false, which means zero, not S3, negation of zero is positive, so let's say it's one, and if you will add them together, you will have one positive number. So that's how you basically can solve all these problems. Um, the easiest way is to apply numerical uh, combination. And uh, the last problem I have is about basically about theorems. Theorems 
are, well, that's usually our implications, like if-then kind of statements, right? So I have a few examples. So statement A, uh, uh, two numbers are integers. Number two, second statement B, their sum is integer. And let's just think about, it. is this true? If two numbers are integers, then their sum is also integer. Well, that's definitely true. Okay? <coughs> Now, next one. This is basically, let's call it a basic statement, basic theorem. Now, what if I will try to reverse from B to A? Is it true or false? Now, this is called converse. So, converse statement is when, um, well, the original statement, when you have from A follows B, A implies B. Now, the A is called antecedent, and B is called consequent statement. So it's like the cause uh, and, and the result. Um, this is causality, basically, a relationship. Now, is, um, if, if this is true, and this is true, basically, if two numbers are integer, then their sum is integer, would the converse statement be true? If sum of two numbers is um, integer, then these two numbers are integers. No, that's not true. This is false. Because if you will compare, for instance, 1.5 plus 0 0.5, sum is 2, but each one of them is not integer, right? So sum is integer. So this is false. Now, there is an inverse. Now, what's inverse statement? from not A follows not B. How about this? Well, if two numbers are not both integers, then their sum is not integer. Negation of this and negation of this. Two numbers are not both integers, and negation of this their sum is not integer. This is also false for the same reason. These two numbers, this corresponds to this, but their sum is 2, which means it's integer. It's not negation of this. And finally, there is something which is called contrapositive. Contrapositive statement. It's from not B follows not A. Is it true or false? So, let's just think about it. From not B, which means sum is not integer. Sum is not integer. And negation of A, numbers are not integer. Well, let's just think about it. How to find out whether it's true or false? Let's assume that uh, the two numbers are not integers. Then, uh, excuse me, let's assume that two, both uh, in, uh, numbers are integers. Then, according to the basic statement, their sum would be integer. So, if the sum is not integer, we cannot really say that both of them are um, uh, integer. So some of them probably are not integer. So that means that this is a true statement. So again, if sum is not integer, then both cannot be integer. Because if they are, then the sum would be integer. So it's a true statement. And what's interesting is that the basic statement and contrapositive statement are always together, either true or false. 
Um, and again, the proof of this is basically, let's assume the opposite, and then we will use the base statement, and we will have a contradiction with, with the uh, antecedent condition of this particular implication. So, these are uh, problems, some of the problems. Again, I presented a little bit more um, on the uh, textual part of this particular lecture on unisor.com, and I suggested to, 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 to read through this textual part and solve all the problems, and there are answers so you can check yourself. So, this is some kind of a very brief set of exercises on formal logic. Um, I think it's useful because we are basically kind of covering the whole concept of logic and without the uh, symbolics it, it's not really the same. Um, I mean, there are some really logical problems which we were solving in previous lectures and this gives you a more mathematical view onto logic. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.